guys. It's uh, going to be time to pack up soon. So I figured I'd send y'all a video and show y'all basically exactly how I pack my pack. So um, first thing I'm going to do is grab my contractor bag. This is a two mil uh, contractor bag. It's the heavier duty um, kind that you get uh, for contracting, bag and leaves, things like that. So this is my pack and I'm going to set it up here. And um, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and slide my water down into the, to the hydration pack sleeve that it has so handy there for me and has nice little hooks, even hooking on so that it will not fall down. And then this will run through here and across to my chest strap. So. Got my water down in there. Now take this bag, put the bottom down. I'm gonna fold over the top here. I'm gonna probably have to stand up just so I can get get my bearings right here. So um, you're gonna find as I pack this, I I don't want to pack full of a bunch of footballs, so. I will pack a few things in in bags, but for the most part, my tent, sleeping bags and things, I'm just gonna stuff them in here so that it fills all the voids. Because at the end of the day, I want this pack to be balanced. I want my stuff to be accessible and I want it to be convenient. So um, ABCs, accessible, balanced and convenient, or CBS, complete balanced system, whatever the acronyms that you wanna use are. but you really do want your pack to kind of be balanced because you don't want it as you're walking down the trail, you don't want it wish washing all over the place. You don't want it super top heavy and things like that. So mine will kind of be balanced out. The first thing I'm gonna do is put my uh, sleeping pad down at the very bottom because that's probably gonna be one of the last things that I get out for the night. So that's just gonna run right down to the bottom and I'm gonna mash it down so that it's kind of square down on the bottom. And then this is my sleeping bag and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of keep shoving down and really just kind of getting rid of all the empty space. <clears throat> and I know this seems kind of counterintuitive to putting everything in a nice little waterproof compression bag or whatever. But what I found is you just have a lot of dead space in your pack um, that you really can't use around the edges of those little footballs that you put in there when you, you know, my sleeping bag will compress down this small, but then it just drops down in there and then there's blank space on the sides of it. And also, um, it's really better for your gear not to be folded and, and kind of folded in the same way each time. It, it helps it to wear a little bit more evenly if you um, stuff it like that. This is my pillow. Like I said, it'll be one of the last things I get out. Tent stakes. And my rain fly, just gonna keep kind of shoving it down in the edges, just filling up all that void space. So that's kind of gonna be the, the bottom half of my weight. Now in the middle of my pack, I want my heaviest things. I want, don't want it too close to the bottom and I don't want it too close to the top. So probably the heaviest thing I have in all my gear is this 10 pound bag of food. This is uh, food for five days. So that's gonna go right there in the middle. Now I'll have my snacks and stuff where I can get to them, but my meals are gonna be down there in the middle of all that. And then um, I can also put in, this is my clothes. This is uh, a puffy jacket, a couple of dry bras, a couple of fresh pairs of underwear. Um, and I will on this trip, I usually don't. If I'm just going for uh, five days, I would wear the same clothes the whole time. But the Appalachian Trail just seems to be a bit swampy and it just never seems to dry out. So I will go ahead and take a, um, a set of, uh, a spare set of shorts and a, and, a, and a spare hiking shirt, just because by day three, if it hasn't dried out, it is really gross to put that back on in the morning. So, um, so anyway, but that's all my clothes. The puppy jacket is a fleece jacket and I will put that on as soon as I get to camp to kind of let my skin dry out and um, kind of do what it needs to do there. But see, I just kind of keep stuffing it down in here because you keep look, you look at this big pile and you're like, no way is that all gonna fit? Um, but it does. Uh, these are a set of stakes for the tarp that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. It'll go on the outside. Um, this is our bear bag rope. It's about a 50 foot piece of rope with a carabiner on the end. And uh, we have to have that. 
my camp shoes will go right inside there. Tucking it down now, um, and also this is my ditty bag, my personal ditty. So this has things I need at night. I'll have my medicines, my baby powder, baby wipes, a little bit of lotion, earplugs, headlamp, all the things that you need for your personal self at night. This will go drop that right into my tent right after I get it up. <clears throat> now I'll stick in my tent because I definitely want my tent towards the top because if it's if it's rainy and I need to get that up quick, I can. Uh, yank that out of here um, quickly and, and get it. Also, it's a little bit lighter than um, the rest of my gear. And this is the footprint for my tent that goes right in there. And then on this trip, I've decided to, instead of carrying the Crazy Creek, I've got a lightweight Eno. It's a it's just a single person. It's called a Sub 7. It only weighs about eight ounces and then a pair of super light straps. And so I'm just going to put those right in there and take my garbage bag I'm just kind of making sure everything else goes on the outside so that is that for the inside of my pack nice and easy fit there tighten that down Whoop. and one thing to be sure of when you first start with your pack make sure you loosen all your straps up so that when you get ready to put everything in you can loosen them out <clears throat> on the outside of my pack, this is a pair of the set of tent poles. Uh, you guys will be buddy carrying, so one one of you will have the tent poles and the other one will have the body. So if I was carrying this tent with somebody else, they would have the poles. But I'm just going to slide those. I've got a slot right here on the outside side of my pack. Slide that right in there. In the outside pocket of my pack, I'll do this one so you can see. Oh, I forgot to put the stove in. Silly me. This is, uh, and we will spread these around too, but this is a camp stove. It's got its own uh, fuel canister and stove inside, burner that goes in there, and that'll, uh, that's how we boil our water. I can throw that right on top, no problem. Sit that back down. All right, so that is um, my pack with my tent and everything. And then I'll pull this over. This is called the brain of the pack. So it sits up here on top so that it's easily accessible. And I guess I could just go ahead with it. Uh, in this top, there will be a map and compass in the very top, easy for everybody. Anybody on the trail can reach into my pack and get that. <clears throat> the second half of the brain here will be uh, dedicated to my rain jacket, my rain pants. Just in case it starts to rain and I need to put my hand on that right quick. They are right there raining. Oh, and I'll throw this tech towel in there and also a pair of dry socks just in case we are really having a bad day and I need to get warm and dry quick. Um, everything that I need is here accessible in my brain. So it's just a nice little fluffy topper. Um, some packs, this one in particular, uh, you can actually take this brain off and use it as a day pack. So like if you're camped somewhere and I want to carry it back off um, to another location. Actually, I think I've got that on backwards. Those zippers should be towards my head. So I'll snap that there. And snap that there. And these two will pull down here and here. So there, that's the brain of the pack. So that's all nice and tidy and tight in there. Now then on this outside pack, this is my rain fly. Definitely want to have that where you can put your hand on it at any moment. Um, this is my water filter. Now you can cut the hose on your bladder and put this with the dirty end towards your bladder and the clean end towards your mouth and then just drink from your bladder, uh, pour dirty water into your bladder and drink it straight from there. That's totally fine. We've, we've done that before. Um, you can also just use, this is a squeeze bottle that comes with these and you can definitely um, fill these and then squeeze through your filter down into a bottle like this. Uh, really, it's kind of your preference, however you want to do it, but um, this is the water filter that we provide for, for our camping expedition. So um, you'll be getting one of those and yeah, you can use it kind of however you want, but I always have that right here where I can put my hand on it anytime I need it. 
this water bottle will slip right here on this outside pouch so that I can put my hand on it. Um, the reason I carry an external water bottle like this is um, so I can mix my Gatorade in it. And also so I can kind of, if, I, if we're running low on water, I can fill it and I can know exactly how much water I have and I can calculate how far it is to camp or the next water supply and kind of watch myself that way. So we'll flip it over here and these are my little front pouch here. What I'll put in here, this is my gear ditty. Um, this is kind of just uh, urgent campsite stuff that you might want to put your hand on quickly and easily. Got some spare cordage in case it's trees are really far apart for the uh, tarp that I've got here. I've got some spare cordage for tents. I've got repair kits in case somebody gets a hole in their sleeping pad. I've got the uh, backwash plunger to clean uh, the little filters that we have. I've got some uh, emergency bleach just in case uh, the water is a little, little sketchier than maybe we would like and just want to put a couple drops of bleach in, in your container and then wait 30 minutes, you can do that. But uh, some waterproof matches and an ink pen and notepad just in, just in case. But that's a gear ditty. And then this is our bigger first aid kit. Um, I've kind of got this for the team. This will have stuff like anti-diarrheal and Benadryl and um, bigger wound care stuff. I've got a, a blood stop packet in there in case somebody really has a bad accident. But this is this is for more um, serious things that might happen on the trail. So we'll put that down in there. And then on the very tippy top back here, I'll put, this is what I call just a little boo-boo uh, first aid kit. So basically it's got Neosporin and Band-Aid and some uh, rubber gloves in case somebody gets a scraped on a rock or gets uh, feels a hot spot that we need to tend to while we're um, going down the trail or whatever but that's on the outside there and then like I said this is the Appalachian Trail one thing you can be sure of is you're probably going to see a bear and it's probably going to rain so um, don't worry the bears will be hibernating by the time we're there but this is my rain tarp it's an 8 by 10 foot sill tarp it's a silicone infused nylon so it's basically a giant members only jacket no just kidding um, <laughs> It's, uh, it's just a giant waterproof tarp. I'll carry this for the team. Uh, that way if it's raining, we'll put this tarp up first and then we can take turns going under, putting our pack under there, getting our rain gear squared away, and then uh, hopefully not have to, but you can sort of halfway assemble your tent under the tarp and then move it out to your spot with your rain fly in place so that you don't, you get as little amount of water inside your tent as you can. But um, anytime I have a group backpacking, I like to take one of these big tarps with me. Um, then, like I said, um, on this trip, I'm uh, changing from the Crazy Creek, and I've just switched over to, I've got my hammock if, you know, we're going to really settle in for the afternoon or the evening, uh, fix dinner and everything. But this is, weighs, I don't even know if it weighs five ounces. Um, it's a boogie board. It's a closed cell foam, which means it won't soak up water. It's not like a sponge. It's a closed, closed cell foam pad that I can put down and... Uh, uh, let's admit it, it's not comfortable for me to, to kneel down anymore, um, especially on rocks out in the middle of the woods. So I can kneel down on this when I'm getting water if I need to. I can fold it out like that and sit on it if I need to. But I like to have that just as a kind of a just in case. But I'm just going to slip that right here on the bottom of my backpack so that uh, it's readily accessible um, when we stop and I need a drink. And then last but not least, here on this side of my pack, this is a toilet to go. This is hand sanitizer and uh, toilet paper. Uh, I will have uh, an extra tent stake in case you need to dig what we call a cat hole. Um, if you need to go big potty in the woods, you need to bury it. So in a six, six inch deep hole. So we'll have that in there. But yeah, so this is the pack that I will carry to the woods with you in, gosh, three weeks. Yeah, three weeks from today, we'll be together. We will be camping in the woods three weeks from today. But is that right? Don't quote me on that, but I think that's right. But anyway, this is my pack. Um, like I said, it uh, should be balanced and should be everything should be accessible. Um, you can see it'll stand on its own. I can get to my toilet if I need to. I can uh, get to my rain fly if I need to. I can get to my fill my water pack if I need to or filter my water if I need to. I can put my hand on that external water bottle and fill that up right quick if we're at a creek. Uh, if it starts raining and thundering and we're all a little scared, I can whip that tarp out and throw it over all of us. Um, but really, pretty much, that's kind of it. And so now I will um, show you guys how to put this bad boy on if you're by yourself. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And I think I've, I think I've told you on the front what I have. I always have a bandana on one side and then on this side is our spot, um, spot X. This is a 
uh, satellite transponder that we can communicate with the outside world even if you don't have cell service this is the one that I've been checking in with you um, hopefully you've been getting those messages but you, your loved ones will be able to follow us on the map um, we've shared the map with all the email addresses you've given me I haven't put everybody on there yet because we've still been kind of testing it I want all your relatives to get <laughs> all my little trips to Pine Mountain um, get notices for it but anyway this is the spot X so so yeah, so that's pretty much my pack. Um, in my front pouches here, I'll have all my snacks and some chapstick, uh, maybe a tiny little thing of bug spray. We shouldn't, bugs shouldn't be too bad um, where we're going. But, uh, but yeah, so that's the pack. And now to put it on. All right guys, so y'all know this is a 45 pound pack and nobody needs to be slinging that around by yourself if you can help it. Um, the main thing is get it off the ground if you can, set it up on top of a rock or stump or, or something. Uh, the best thing you can do is have a buddy help you. But if you don't have a buddy, just take your right hand, grab the in, or your dominant hand, grab that inside loop. There's a nice loop there in the middle. <coughs> Get my straps all lined out here. I'm going to lift with my right hand, and I'm going to slide my left hand through that strap at the same time. Lift it. And I've got the weight up on my back. So get that all squared away. Everything dangling that should be dangling, how it should be dangling. So, I've got this 45 pounds on my back, and it's really uncomfortable if it's all on my shoulders. Your arms do not need to do any of the work. God gave us big old legs, so that's where we, that's what we want to do all of the work. So I'm going to open my waist straps up to go around, and then I'm going to take my pack and kind of lift it where my hip bones are under that waist strap. And then while I'm leaned over like this, tighten that thing down really good. It ain't pretty, but now all my weight is on my hips, completely on my hips. So I've got it below kind of your gut, but above your hip, if that makes sense. You don't want it affecting your breathing, but you want it to be on top of your hip bones. Now, the next second thing I'll do is I will tighten my shoulder straps. And you'll get to the feel of those. I know everybody still kind of grabs around. And you'll notice there's no daylight between the top of my shoulder and those straps. They're nice and snug, but not too tight. Then I will clip on my shoulder harness there. And then last but not least, my water has a magnetic clip that will clip right there. <clears throat> I can pull my load forward a little bit, these two load straps, if I need to pull it in like that. But the main thing is I feel like my shoulders are completely mobile. Uh, when I use my trekking poles, they're not going to be, uh, I'm not going to feel pressure. If your hands go numb, your arm go, goes numb, you're not in right. Uh, you need to get more weight on your hips. And like I said, it's not pretty, but that's kind of what it is. Just keep tightening that up till your arms feel that freedom. Cause when you get it right, you feel completely, your arms are completely free and you can use your trekking poles, wherever you need to do. Like I said, it's not pretty. Uh, I typically will blouse a blouse over this little situation here. But uh, anyway, it's just us. So I figured what the heck I'll show y'all. But that's your pack. I am loaded and ready to go. 45 pounds, ready to hit the woods. And I know some of y'all are packing with 30 now and you'll go up from there. Um, it, uh, I don't care who you are and I don't care how strong you are. The first time you put a 40 pound pack on, you have an oh crap moment of what have I done? I cannot manage this through the woods for this many days, but your body adjusts fairly quickly. Um, the more you can get out and pack, uh, with a full pack right now, the better off you'll be. So get out there, get some practice with it. You know, even just walking around your house, just put it on and get your body used to what's what does it feel like if I drop my trekking pole and I have to go all the way down to get that? You know, just, just get used to your pack. Um, the more your body is used to this weight, the happier you will be on this trip. Um, we had a couple of women last time, one in particular, she was not prepared. She had never put a 40 pound pack on. She had walked to get in shape and, and she was in good shape. She had recently lost a lot of weight. She was, had a heart of a lion. I mean, she had, she was a champ, but she was not physically prepared. And from what I've seen, uh, all of you are 
in a place where you will be able to complete this hike. We are not gonna have super long distance days. And if we feel like as a group, we are done for the day and we just wanna stop and camp because it's a pretty place or whatever, we're gonna do that. But I wanna set each of you up for success. I don't want anybody to go away from this um, just miserable, thinking we rode you into the ground every day, just trying to make it to the place that uh, we said we were going to on the map. But I want it to be a, a time that you enjoy the journey, enjoy each other. I know God's got um, got plans for each of us, how he's going to work on our hearts, how he's going to work on us individually, because it is going to be hard. There is nothing easy about backpacking for five days. It is going to be cold, you're going to be wet, you're going to be hot, you're going to be sticky, you're going to be dry, you're going to have chap lips, you're going to be peeing in the woods and it's going to get on your boots. It's just, you know, there's just a lot of things um, that are going to happen and it's just going to really test your patience and so I just want to challenge and encourage each of you just to keep the attitude that it always seems to work out no matter what it always seems to work out so just take a breath and just keep getting your gear together um, I've got a little plan for us that I'll be revealing kind of a little bit closer to time once I get everything locked in with the hostel that we're gonna stay at but um, we're gonna meet here in Ackworth on Saturday and um, and then on Sunday, we're gonna to drive to Hot Springs and we've kind of got a plan set up from there. So um, yeah, so we'll be picking you guys up at the airport that are flying in and I'm excited to see you on in September on that Saturday. So yeah, happy trails.